Welcome if you're joining us. We told you earlier on that we'll be having Pastor Troy Anthony Smith all the way from the U.S. of A. And he's together with us, basically just to get to share and hear what God has in his heart um, as, as a message for this nation. So, Pastor Anthony, welcome. Thank you, sir. I'm really happy you. It feels so good to be here. Lovely. So I'm so overwhelmed with the love that I've been what? seeing since I've been here. Great. You've been here for how long? I flew in late on Wednesday night. Okay. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. So you have been doing ministry yes. in Kenya. You reached a specific church? Uh, when Reconciliation of the Cross Ministry, they invited me and okay. it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Great. So for, for the viewers joining us right now, probably they, we just need to give them a, a, a bit of an understanding of who Pastor Troy Anthony is. Let's start from there. Jesus. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, the ministry is all focused on Jesus. Right. And God has commissioned me and my ministry to bring it back to that, bring it back to the focus of the cross. Amazing. You are a pastor yes. in uh, the U.S. Yes. Um, where do you pastor exactly? In Los Angeles, in the middle of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of Hollywood. And yes. there's something I want to understand. Uh, there's a lot that happens in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, a life that is not real. A lot of fakeness, mm -hmm. you know. How do you manage to be at the center of Hollywood and be real and serve Christ in, in, in your capacity? That's an excellent question because Hollywood is all deception. Yeah. You have a handful of actors that are really world famous, mm -hmm. but then the masses want to be like them. Mm -hmm. And so they think they're going after this life that looks like it's invincible, but the life they really want is through Christ. And so my job is to show them that's what you really want is Christ. You don't want this other life. Mm -hmm. And so we're rooted in the Word of God. And we've seen people, actors, musicians, come to Jesus because that's what they're really looking for. Mm. So there's, there's actually a vacuum in them that uh, needs to be filled. And uh, how, how, how has it been for you just doing ministry, uh, especially to the actors? Is it a challenge? Not really because my mind is... I'm not going to treat you different if you're world famous mm -hmm. or if you're just on the street. And they respect that because Jesus' blood is the same for this person as that person. Right. And as it, if you can relate to them one-on-one, -on -one, you're able to cut through easier mm -hmm. than if you put them on, on a pedestal like, oh, you're this fake Denzel Washington or this Will Smith. Right. No, you're a person that meets Jesus. We all do. Mm -hmm. and you, um, uh, Pastor Anthony, you have... Um, Looking at your portfolio, yeah. rather your profile, you have quite a number of things. You are actually an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you are an author, mm -hmm. you are a pastor, and for that matter, you are a pastor who speaks and shares with the people in the streets, in the malls, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, places where people don't want to go, where you know, the Christian, the perfect Christian doesn't want to go, mm -hmm. the perfect Christian wants to be in charge. So out of all these things, and uh, you're also a marketing executive, you've mm -hmm. done quite a bit of marketing. Uh, how are you able to see out who exactly Pastor Smith is? And uh, in the boardroom, uh, when you're doing your marketing activities, when you're writing, mm -hmm. uh, how, how do you remain to be authentic as a pastor again in doing ministry in all these uh, different capacities? Yes. it's. Like I said before, it's all about Christ. Right. A lot of that is before I got to know him. Mm -hmm. I was in the business world. I was actually working in the music business. Okay. And I had a radical encounter with Jesus. Mm. And I knew right then and there, my life would never be the same. So my focus now is all about Jesus. Really? So a lot of that was before I got to know him. Mm -hmm. So now we, we focus on showing that to the people. What happened to me, I want to show that to the people. Amazing. 2004, you were doing um, a campaign for Reebok? Yes. Then you had a Damascus experience. Yeah. Just share, share, share a bit about that. How was that for you? I mean, that was, I'm sure that was a really big thing for you, mm -hmm. uh, doing marketing for Reebok. Mm -hmm. And then uh, all of a sudden, there's a shift in your life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I get excited just thinking about it. Right. So let me give you some background. Mm -hmm. My family didn't grow up in the church. We knew about Jesus, but we didn't know Jesus. We're kind of casual Catholics. 
So I went to school, went to college, got my MBA, had a great job, and all of a sudden, this emptiness that all the, this emptiness was growing inside of me. I was like, there has to be more to, more to life mm -hmm. than this. Right. Mm -hmm. And then one night, I went out partying, went to the club, and came home, and I turned on the television, and Christian television was on. I don't really, I didn't watch <laughs> Christian television. <laughs> and the lady was preaching, mm -hmm. and she said, she started speaking to me. She was like, you just got home from the club, and you're drunk. Okay, God is going to use you. He's going to send you all around the world. <laughs> and then I tried to turn the, cha the, the channel, it but it wouldn't work. <laughs> it okay. wouldn't work. Why? And then the next day, because that, that totally freaked me out. Mm -hmm. The very next day, I heard this voice. Now I know it's the Holy Ghost, but back then I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I heard this voice, and the voice said, go see so-and-so. And he was a, he used to be a rapper. Now he's a pastor. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Ghost told me to go see him. So the next morning, I went to the to his church. The church was right across the street from where I lived. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So I went to his church, and he looks at me, and he says the same thing that the lady said the night before. Right. About how God is going to use me, and there's no coincidence that I'm here, and he's going to send me all around the world. Amazing. And then right then and there, I received the fullness of God. Wow. I received what I was always looking for. Mm. And that experience changed everything in my life. Mm -hmm. I've been running ever since. Did he pray for you? I didn't know if he had them. Actually, he, he prophesied those words to me. Uh -huh. And then after then, I just went up to the altar to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Got filled mm -hmm. with the Holy Ghost a couple mm -hmm. of days later. And for about the next six months, I was just in my room praying and reading the word for about eight hours a day, listening to, to sermons and just mm -hmm. totally renewing my mind. I became a totally different person within those six months. Wow. So your shift was actually at 361. 360. I mean, you didn't have, uh, I mean, for you it was not like day two, I've got to stop doing this, day three. No. For you it was immediately. That's why I say Damascus, like Paul, I, I yeah. totally just changed my life. Amazing. And I'm sure that uh, put you into a totally different position, especially with some of the friends you had. Oh, yeah. Some <laughs> of the things you were doing. How was that for you? My family thought I was crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All my friends left. Wow. They thought I joined a cult. But mm. here's an interesting story. Because my family thought I was crazy. My mom... She flew, cause they, my family's in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. They flew down to Atlanta to see, how was, how was he? How? My mom saw wow. the change that was in me. She said, I want that change for myself. Amazing. And so she got filled with the Holy Ghost, gave her life to God, and wow. she went, flew back on fire for God. And she's still on fire for God. Oh, praise God. You run a ministry yes. called Demonstrative. Yes. And um, your ministry is basically about healing. Mm -hmm about miracles mm -hmm. and about um, generally just the power of God yes. being manifest yes. amongst the people you speak to. Mm -hmm. one, thing, one of the things you've spoken vocally about uh, it's about healing mm -hmm. and you've actually say that um, healing is actually within us and we just need if we have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior we need to manifest it within us. There are mm -hmm. some people who don't understand what, what that is all about. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can break it down for us. It's, it's, for me, it's simple. When I came to Jesus, I didn't think about being a preacher. I didn't think about telling people. What I thought about was, how can the experience that happened to me be real to them? Right. And when you read about Jesus' ministry, he was known for healing the sick, mm -hmm. doing miracles. Mm -hmm. So I wanted it to be so real that you cannot deny that Jesus has, that Jesus has encountered you. Mm -hmm. So that's what our focus is now, is, is making it so real to the people that they cannot deny that this is real. It's not just church, it's not just religion. Because mm -hmm. they've seen that. Right, they've seen that a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So Pastor, today, I mean, in your ministry and what you do, if you walk out of this studio mm -hmm. and you find someone who's sick right outside of there, you mm -hmm. pray for them. Yes. That's your ministry. Yes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you know the person, you don't know the person, you'll go ahead and do that. It doesn't matter if they're a believer, if they're a Muslim, if they're male, female, or it does not matter. Where do you get the courage to do that? <laughs> it's not so much about courage as much mm -hmm. as it's about love. 
Because Jesus was so filled with compassion, and that compassion is love in action. Mm -hmm. It'll cause you to just step out of yourself and just love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And that love manifests in the power of God. Wow. There's an experience of um, one day you went to hospital, and there were about 40 people mm -hmm. who are unknown. I'm in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and quite a lot of people got healed. Mm -hmm. on that specific day. And yes. I want you to share that testimony to the, um, I mean for our viewers mm -hmm. so that we can just understand that there is such power in believing in mm -hmm. Christ and believing that you can actually receive yes. your healing. Mm -hmm. right. One believer filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. can clear out a whole hospital. Wow. So with my church, we would take out a group of people, we go all over the place. Sometimes we go to the hospitals, sometimes we go to the grocery stores or the malls. So one particular time we went to the hospitals, we went to the, the emergency room. People were sitting around waiting to see a doctor or a physician or a surgeon. So we just went while they were in the, in the waiting room and prayed for them. Mm -hmm. And they got healed. They didn't even need to go to the doctor because they were already healed. Wow. And then a couple, maybe 20 minutes later, another batch would come in. We pray for them. They <laughs> healed too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure even, uh, for them they are wondering, I mean, I've, I came here to receive a different kind of healing. Mm -hmm. But I received Christ in the process. And for you, by praying for them, for them receiving Christ, they are going to receive salvation. Yes. And they walk people. Yes. Amazing. We will be getting to uh, pray together later on, together with our viewers. And so if you're there, you can actually send in your prayer request. Remember, you can go to our Twitter handle, at KTN Tukuza, our Facebook page is Tukuza. You can like it. And uh, just send your prayer request. I mean, we have an amazing servant of God who is going to pray together with us. But I want you to mention something about faith. Mm -hmm and about you believing mm -hmm. that you can actually receive the healing or even cancellation of debts, because that's something mm -hmm. else that you, you actually are very vocal about. Oh, yeah. I can share a bit about that, about faith, so that uh, we, we start getting ready, you know, to receive from Christ. Mm -hmm. Faith turns it on. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the studio. It's already wired with electricity, and it's already, the power is there. But right. until you turn the switch, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So faith, an action that says you believe turns on the power of God. Mm -hmm. Whether it's for healing, whether it's for debt cancellation, that happened to me. $30,000 of debt just wow. wiped out. I just believed God, <laughs> and then I checked my credit report, it was gone. So it's the same thing no matter we're talking about healing, deliverance, addictions. Mm -hmm. The power of God is more than enough. Amazing. And if we believe that, we'll start to see that. Mm -hmm. Great. So we, I think we will allow you to go to, to our pulpit. Okay. Then you will get to share with us. Later on, we'll get an opportunity to pray together with our viewers. And then we'll do a bit of a jig, a Kenyan okay. jig, as we, <laughs> as we get to wind up. But God bless you. Thank you so much for yes. giving us an opportunity just to get to share. So um, we'll allow you to walk there. And you can share with us. Glory to God. It's such a pleasure to be here today. And I just want to share some truths that, that God has shared with me. Everything is rooted in love. The power of God, the results that we're looking for, it's all rooted in love. People ask me all the time, how do you just go into a hospital and just pray for people? How do you go into a movie theater or go into the grocery stores? It's because you've been so filled with love. Whether it's prophecy, healing, anything of God, it's rooted in love. So let me share this story, how this became real to me. I was invited to do a, a prophecy conference about three years ago. And the lady that hosted the conference, she invited me to come. And she said, OK, for the prophecy session, Troy Anthony Smith is going to do the, the, the prophesying. Now, I'm not really known as a prophet. I usually play for the sick and the pastor. But I haven't really moved in that area that much. So the night before, her and her husband, they looked at me and they prophesied. They said, Father God, we thank you for your servant Troy, that you shared your heart with him, that you revealed your heart with him. Now, as they prophesied to me, that didn't mean a whole lot to me at the time. I looked at them like, I just nodded my head in agreement. But that didn't make any sense to me. He revealed his heart. It didn't make any sense. 
So fast forward to the next day. I'm there, and she tells me I'm going to prophesy to all these people who flew all around the country. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, what am I going to say? I'm thinking about excuses, how I'm going to get out of it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I looked and I felt the presence of God as I've never felt before. And it was as if his heart was expanded. His heart became so real to me. And it was even at the point where it was almost painful. And so God began to share with me his love, his heart, to the point it was almost painful. And tears started to, started, started to stream down my face. And the only thing that I could think about was sharing this love to the people, sharing this love to them. So let me explain the switch. Before I, before I actually began to minister to the people, all I could think about was, what am I going to say? What if I say the wrong thing? What if, what if this? What if that? You see, every attack from the enemy was all focused on myself. You see, the enemy is going to do anything to you. He's going to get you focused on you, focused on your problem, your situation. Look what they did to me. I, and if we want to move in the spirit of the Lord, we must be delivered from ourselves. We must be delivered from the torment and the torture of you. So I'm sitting there, and I'm prophesying to each person. And as I'm doing that, I begin to get so overwhelmed by this, this, this function and flood of love. And I'm in tears just showing people this love. And the only thing that I could think about it wasn't about what I was saying. It wasn't about if, I was, if they were receiving the accurate words. The only thing that I could think about was Jesus. Let them know how much you love them. That was a couple years ago. And ever since then, I began to understand God's heart for ministry. You see, my church is in Los Angeles, and it's very down to earth. We go into the streets. We go into the hospitals. The focus is so they can experience God's love, experience the raw, pure love of God. And that manifests through, through, through healing, through miracles. We've seen so many miracles in our ministry, but the focus isn't miracles. The focus isn't healing. The focus is let them see how much Jesus loves them. Let them experience this love, because once you experience this love, you will never be the same. As I explained earlier about my location in Hollywood, what you must understand is people come from all over the world to be big actors and singers and, and, and live that life, be on television. But they're going after this life because they think that's the life, the dream life. They think that's the life that, that is the supreme top notch not realizing that the life that they're looking for is the life of Christ. You see, our job is to share this with the world. All the nations desire Jesus. They desire his love, his freedom, his peace, his joy, but they don't know it. So our job is to let them see that. So a couple years ago, when I received the call to start the ministry, I was like, how am I going to do ministry? I'm already, I was almost 30 years old. There's ministers that were raised in the gospel, that were preaching since they were 10 years old, that have <laughs> pastors and churches. I was like, how am I going to do this, Lord? He was like, don't worry about what anyone else is doing. I've called you to demonstrate the love of God, demonstrate the power of God, demonstrate his healing power wherever you go. So call it that, demonstrated ministries. So I began to go out into the streets, go into the grocery stores and the malls, and just demonstrate, look for people who would need what God had for them. So that's how we got started. I didn't get invitations. I didn't get preachers calling me and telling me to come here. I just went to where the people were. So I began to write down my experiences. 
Right down, we saw this person healed. We saw this person delivered. We saw this person give their life to Christ. And I just started writing it down. Then that became a blog. I started writing it on the internet. And that blog started getting people from all, literally all over the world started reading this blog. People from China, people from England, people from even here in Africa. So that blog ended up becoming, a, I put the, the blog entries together and that became my first book. And I put that book out, it's called Demonstrated, Unleashing Signs and Wonders. And so as people began to read the blog and they began to read the book, I started getting invitations literally from all over the world, all over the world. Just in the last two years, I've been, I've ministered in India, last month I was in South Africa, all over North America and Canada, and it's the same message. That's the only thing I came here to, to say today, wherever you're watching this from, it's no different if you live in Hollywood, California, if you live in Beijing, or if you live in Kenya. Christ died for you. The risen hope of glory is inside of you today. Because people ask me, well, I don't think I can do that. I, I'm, I'm not called to do healing. I'm not called to do this. See, we missed it. We've been called to walk out the life of Christ. John 14, 12 says that if any man believes in me, the works that I do, you will do also. In fact, you will do even greater works because I go to be with the Father. These greater works, the works of Christ, you can do that today. So I want to encourage you as, you as you're watching this, if you have anything, any pain or any, anything troubling you, Know that it is the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Know that whatever you're struggling with, it's more power in you to rise up out of the situation. Why? Not because you're special, not because of your family, not because of, of anything that you've done, simply because of Christ. So my mandate is to return to the word of God, return to the simplicity of Jesus. People tell me all the time after I minister, man, that was, that was just so simple. So simple. You see, the gospel is very, very simple. When the first apostles took this message to the, far, the foreign lands, it was a simple message. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Christ can fix the need. Christ can heal your body. Christ can deliver you. And if we get back to that original message, we'll start seeing great revival. When God called me, he called me to go to California, and I began to study church history. I began to study the great revivals and, and how God moved across the, 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 the faces of the, of the earth. And one, and one revival that stood out to me was Azusa Street. Now, when I first moved to California, I thought it was Azusa, California. Now, Azusa, California is about, about 40 miles south of Los Angeles. And I lived in downtown Los Angeles. And then one day the Holy Spirit said, research where, where, where you're living at. So I researched where I was. The street I lived on was Spring Street. Now, I did my research, and Azusa Street, they tore down the street. It's no longer there. But the street I was actually living on was where Azusa Street was. And so God says, I have you right here for a purpose, where this great revival that spread across the United States and spread to all, the, all around the world, I have you here for a reason, because the church has gotten so bloated and forgotten the original message, so I'm sending you, not necessarily to the big churches, not necessarily to the people that already know, but the people that don't know. Share my love. Share my healing power with whatever, they, whatever they're going through. I'm even believing that while you're watching this message right now, it's people right now that are listening to this that are going to be healed. We had a meeting just two nights ago, and as I was ministering, people were getting healed right while they were sitting there. They, I didn't lay hands on them. I didn't say anything. Why? Because it's the Word of God. And even though you're not in the studio with us right now, the Word of God can cut through the airwaves and touch you right where you are. Right where you are. There's no time. There's no distance. The spirit is here. I had one story about this lady wrote me. She got a copy of my book, and she was in 
the, the country, rural part of, of England in the United Kingdom. And she started reading my book, and God touched her, and she got healed just by reading the book. So if you're here and you're listening to this right now, the Spirit of God can cut through these airwaves and touch you, even right now. I truly believe that. Let's talk about faith for a second. There's a difference between believing and faith. Believing is a state of mind, and it's important. You have to believe. But simply believing won't activate the power of God. We go all over Los Angeles and all over the world. Everywhere we go, we touch people, and we see the power of God activated. So believing is important. But faith is acting upon the word of God. Faith is acting upon what you believe. Faith is becoming so consumed with this belief that it causes you to do something. So you believe, that's good you believe. James says, the demons believe too. Be so full of this belief that it causes you to do something. So if you're sitting there right now, and if you have pain in your body anywhere, if you have something with your arm and you can't move it, by faith, go ahead and move it, and you will see the Spirit of the Lord has touched you. Why? Because you believe the words that I'm saying, the words that Jesus said, and you act upon it, it'll work for you. So, let's say you believe, let's say you have faith. That by itself is not enough. When you love, <laughs> see, love is what causes the action. It's people that know all the scriptures, know all the testimonies, know all the revivals, and don't do any of it. Why is that? I used to wonder, why is that? That someone who can, can know the scriptures, they can quote eight healing scriptures and, and all these things, but we don't see it happen in their life. See, it's only until you become consumed with the love of God. The Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. Compassion will drive you to touch the sick. Compassion will drive you to not just walk by someone that's hurting. I had a meeting just last week. I was in London, and I got this revelation, and it's really simple. When you look at people who are suffering, you see Jesus can help them, and I'm the one who's here. People are suffering. Jesus can help them, and I'm the one who's here. See, a lot of times we look for this person or that person, and God's like, you're the one who's here right now. You're here right now. So if you're here, and if you're listening to this, the Spirit of the Lord is there present. Go ahead and try it out. If you had pain in your knees, go ahead and, go ahead and bend your knees. If you had trouble swallowing, go ahead and get something to drink and just swallow it. Watch. We have, <laughs> we have so many testimonies. I could, I could stand here for, for, for hours and just give you testimonies. Let me give you this one, and then I know we've got to close the time and we've got to wrap it up. What I want you to know is that whatever you're going through, this is the, the simplistic message, whatever you're going through, Jesus died to make you whole. Whatever the situation is, I want to make it real simple today. Whatever the situation is, we had a lady come to our, this was not too long ago, an older lady, she came to our, our, our church in Los Angeles. Um, one of the members, he told her, he said that um, if you, that she was in the hospital, she said if you leave the hospital and you come to this service, God's going to touch you. And she had six tumors in her body. So she got all her family. They still had the, the medical bands on. They came to our service. God touched her. All the tumors disappeared out of her body. She had a direct encounter with Jesus, a direct encounter with the King of Kings. Now that was in church. We've had the same things happen outside of the church. So as we close, I want you to just fully realize and fully take hold of this. That wherever you are, Jesus can touch you. So go ahead and try it out right now. Pain in your body, pain in your back, move your back around. <laughs> Watch, start laughing because you know that's the spirit of the Lord on you. I can feel it and I'm not even with you right now. 
He's touching someone, even right now. You, I feel the Spirit say, it's a lady, you're laying in bed right now, and you're feeling heat. It's like intense heat on you right now. That's the Spirit of the Lord right now. Glory to God, I feel it. <laughs> so I want to just encourage you that Jesus loves you, and the root of everything is that he's going to heal you because he loves you. You can heal other people because he loves them. So let's not make it complex, not make it super complicated, and just make it simple. The people are struggling. The people are suffering. Jesus can help them, and you're the one who's there. He's called you to do it. He's called all of us to do it, all the believers. If you're a believer in Jesus, you can do the works that Jesus did. He has empowered you. He has equipped you, and he expects you to do it too. At my church in Los Angeles, we all do it. We all go out into the streets. We all go to the hospitals. They don't just come and bring, bring the sick up to the pastor. When someone is sick, they're fighting over each other. Who can pray for the person? <laughs> and it's amazing. It's amazing. So as I close, I just want to encourage you that whatever the problem is, you can do it. Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It can be done. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> yeah, Anthony, we can actually have a seat right here. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I love the simplicity that comes with uh, the Word of God. Amen. And you have brought it so simple. I mean, when Christ was on earth, even the miracles he did were not complicated. The woman with the issue of blood just had to touch the garment, the hem of his garment. And actually, she got her healing. So we, we bless God for, for that message. And thank you for sharing, again, the testimonies of what God has done in the lives of these people. We, and I'm sure that really, you know, activates our faith to believe that God is able to do it. What we're going to do, we're going to basically just take a few prayer requests sure. of uh, our viewers. Uh, our brother on the other side will take a few. Let me just take a few before we go to him. And we'll get to pray together as we wind up. There's uh, Ruthie says, uh, pray for total healing, body, and mind. And says, Amen. Uh, Faith Marion also says, pray for my sick brother and believe in God for his healing. We have um, uh, a guy here, uh, a lady called uh, Maggie Ellen says, uh, I pray that the Lord will give me peace even as I trust him for, for more of that. Je uh, Vasita Javinsi says, uh, good morning to Cruz. I'm humbled to be alive today. I want you to pray for all the young people uh, that haven't been, you haven't witnessed God's unending miracle in their lives. God bless you and thank you, Pastor, for being an inspiration to us. Many, many more coming. I think we'll allow um, DJ Sadiq to also read a few. Yeah. Uh, Sishiro, you're saying uh, let's pray for peace and love in our country. And Wanza, you're saying, let's pray for, uh, for all our lives to change for good. Dr. B, uh, you're saying, please pray for my friend Martha. She is sick that God may heal her and restore her health. Amen. Uh, Joanne Joseph, you're saying, uh, you, you just want to, to thank God that you're alive and that we should pray for you to get a job. Um, AC Vitalis Wambu, you're saying, if God is for us, who shall be against us? Let us pray that God, that Jesus will be with us throughout. Uh, thank you. Benson Maina Mwangi, you're saying, let's pray for peace and love in our country, and also pray for me as I start the journey of representing God through music. Godfrey Gahanga, you're saying, let's pray for the orphans and the widows and also our economy, and the people who are sick, and also the refugees. Lovely. Yeah. Quite, a, quite a thank you very much, uh, DJ Sadi. Quite a number are sticking, I mean, healing. There are people who desire to get jobs, even after looking for them for a while. Peace in our nation, the economy. And so we will allow you to pray as, as the Lord leads you. And then as you, as you mind that prayer, we'll also give you an opportunity to pray to, uh, for those who desire to receive Christ Amen. as Lord and Savior in their lives, because that's a great commission we have. So, Pastor, welcome. We will allow you to do it. Amen, amen. Right now, 
to healing. If you need healing in your body, in your physical body, you have a condition, the doctors gave you a diagnosis, you have pain or you have a broken bone or whatever it is, I want you to stretch your hands toward this television screen. And the power of God is going to touch you. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, touch them even right now where they're standing, where they're sitting, or where they're laying down. Holy Ghost, begin to just minister to them. Show them how much you love them. Touch them even right now, Holy Ghost. I ask that you release your love, your power, your joy upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, there it is, Holy Ghost. There it is. Some of you all are feeling it even right now. And if you need peace right now, the God of peace, peace right now is beginning to flow. You're going to feel it like hot oil just, just flowing over your head. That's Jesus. That's his love. The peace of God flood you now. Jesus. Jesus. Holy Ghost, we thank you for touching those who need you right now, who are looking to you, not man, but you. Only you can satisfy. And right now, I thank you for touching them. Peace right now. Thank you, Jesus. And even those that are struggling over under financial debts and financial pressures, right now you're feeling the peace of God move in your Jesus. life. Even though you might not see anything different happen, you're understanding that the God of peace is with you, and he will not leave you, he will not forsake you, so now you can just have peace. Jesus. 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 This is a lady right now. You've been praying earnestly about your family. They're trying to break your family apart. But right now, God says, I have you. Mm. Watching over you. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And if you have any condition or anything right now, just receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Just like the lady with the issue of blood, she received it. Mm. Just receive it right now. The Spirit is here. The presence of God is here. The anointing is here. Amen. So wherever you are, just receive it by faith mm. right now. Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I will give an opportunity for those who want to receive Christ. You want to live us? Yes. Great. The greatest decision you will ever make is giving your life to Jesus. <laughs> if I could do it all again, I would do it all again. Mm. It's nothing that can compare to that. Nothing. So right now, wherever you are, just repeat this after me. Jesus. Jesus. I come to you now. I come to you now. Take my life. Take my life. And do something with it. And do something with it. I yield to you. I yield to you. Right now. Right now. And I submit to you. And I submit to you. I give you my life. I give you my life. This day. This day. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we want to encourage you if you've made that prayer together with Pastor Anthony. But uh, you just go and tell someone. Tell someone that, you know, today I was watching KTN. I prayed with a pastor and I received Christ because that already establishes accountability. And uh, read the Bible, go to a Bible-believing church, because that's where you will find room for growth, and uh, you will grow right there. Others, Pastor, thank you so much. We appreciate it. I'm, I'm sure quite a number of your church members are watching, <laughs> and people from the U.S. You can just say hi to them, eh? So what Hello, um, everybody. You <laughs> can actually say that in Swahili. Say, ma, muka vipi, eh? Muka vipi. Great. Thank you so much. We will want to teach you one or two moves okay. that we do uh, right here in Kenya. And then uh, we will leave you with love as you go back okay. to, 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 to USA this evening. And I thank you very much again. And God bless you. God. And we welcome you again to come and sure. do some God's meet okay. right here in Kenya. <laughs> so we'll go to where our DJ is. Then uh, we'll do a few moves. <laughs> 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 so, so. Uh -huh.